let's move on. Chapter three, building planning. Now again, we highlighted that one because that's a question we've seen, but do you agree chapter two definition works like any glossary or dictionary you've ever seen? So if you need anything else about that, just go look them up alphabetically and that's where they'll be, okay? Chapter three, building planning. Now quick reminder, building planning, this is the junk drawer of the code book. So we're gonna see stuff about all kinds of things. Um, parapet walls, fire resistant construction, um, egress, emergency escape and rescue, light ventilation and heating, right? So all kinds of stuff, glazings. So again, this is the junk drawer of the code. Now, this would be a problem if we were using the table of contents. But do you agree it's not a problem if we're using the index? Because if I look up um, fire resistant construction in the index and it says refer to R302, do you agree? I don't even care what chapter it's in. It said chapter three, section 02, but I wouldn't have cared which chapter they put this in. So again, that's why this is a wonderful example of why the index is so much better in the back of the book, okay? So open up to page 33, 3-33. Bottom left there, we've got section R302, fire resistant construction. So stop for a second. Do you agree if we're working on something that's not fire resistant construction, then we need to stop reading immediately? Okay, so if we are fire resistant construction, what do we got to do? So now let's take a look at R302.2, townhome. Stop. Do you agree? The only thing I'm going to learn in R302.2 is something about townhomes only in regard to fire resistant construction. Do you agree? They're not going to tell me how much light or how much ventilation or how many square feet the kitchen has to be or whatever of a townhome. They're going to talk about 302 only. And 302 is fire resistant construction. So I'm gonna learn something about fire resistant construction on townhomes. So then let's go to the top of, the, of uh, page 35 there. We've got R302.2.4, parapets for townhomes. Now again, do you agree they didn't have to tell me this parrot was for a townhome? Is that true or not? They did not have to tell me this parrot was for a townhome. Because do you agree, context of the code. Now this is the first time we're seeing this, pay close attention, very easy but you got to get it. So do you agree R302.2.4 is a subsection of R302.2, right? So let's look back on the page 33. R302.2 is a what? Townhome. And this is only an R302.2. Take the last number, make it go away, of a subsection 302. Make sense? So 302, fire resistance construction, 302.2 townhomes, 302.2.4 is now parapets for townhomes, right? So this is going to tell me about the parapet on a townhome in regard to its fire-resistant construction, and it's going to tell me nothing else. Make sense? So highlight down below there, 302.2.4 uh, parapets for townhomes. Down below that, number one, it says where roof surface adjacent wall or walls are at the same elevation the parapet shall extend not less than 30 inches above the roof surface. So that means if your, if your townhome and my townhome, the roofs are the same height, we need a parapet between there. That parapet has to be 30 inches above the roof, right? Now, again, if you keep reading dot two or dot three or dot four, we'll tell you if they're not at the same level, then we gotta be 30 inches above the higher one, right? But this says if the roofs are the same level, okay? We've gotta be 30 inches above it. Now, let me ask you, why do we need a 30 inch parapet between these two townhomes Right? And the answer is because we're afraid somebody in one town home might catch theirs on fire. The purpose of this parapet is to channel the flames upward to keep it from rolling onto the adjacent property. Now, do you agree the wall between your town home and my town home, if we're neighbors, that is an occupancy separation wall? It's not an occupancy separation wall because it changes occupancies. It's an occupancy separation because it, se it separates your occupancy from my occupancy, right? They're both R2s, but it separates your R2 occupancy from my R2 occupancy, right? So again, that needs to be a fire rated wall. So because it needs to be a fire rated wall, then the parapet has to extend 30 inches above. If this wall was not fire rated and you put a parapet on it, you can do whatever you want. But if you need this parapet for fire resistance construction, then it must be 30 inches above the roof, okay? Let's move on, page 38. Page 3-38, bottom left, we're still R302. Stop. Do you agree 302 is still fire-resistant construction? Again, that's how we got here. 302, fire-resistant construction. 302.11, fire blocking. So this is fire blocking in regard to fire-resistant construction. Okay? 
So top right, we've got R302.11.1, fire blocking materials. Now again, we should have picked up R3, well, so bottom left there, fire blocking, R302.11, fire blocking. And then top right, R302.11.1, fire blocking materials. So again, do you agree they didn't have to say fire blocking again? Do you agree if they had just said materials, we would have known these were materials for a 302.11? By the way, if you forget what a 302.11 is, no big deal, just look down. What's a 302.11? Oh, that's fire blocking. Oh, this is materials. Okay, this is materials for fire blocking. Now, the reason I'm teaching it the way I am is this clearly says parapets for townhomes. This clearly says fire blocking materials. But sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll just say parapets. Sometimes it'll just say fire blocking. So you got to look at the context. So again, remember I told you I was going to preach on two things, context and interpretation. So here we're learning about context, right? The context of R302.11.1 material is in a sub-subsection of 302.11, which is fire blocking, which is a subsection of fire-resistant construction. Hey, if you're building fire-resistant construction and you need fire blocking, this is the material you use. That's what they're telling me. Again, the way you understand this is simply take the last number, make it go away. Do you agree if I take this dot one away, that takes me back to 302.11. So this fire blocking material is in regard to 302.11. Do it again. If you take the dot 11 fire blocking away, do you agree that takes you back to 302 fire resistant construction? So fire resistant construction for fire blocking, now the material. Okay. Now, again, I'm not going to keep beating you over the head with this, but again, we're early in the code, so we need to understand this very well right away because we're going to use it a thousand more times. Okay. Same philosophy, nothing changes. I don't care how long the number is. If you take the dot, 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 if you take the last one away, that tells you what that's a subsection of. If you take that last number away, it'll tell you what that's a subsection of. If you take that last dot away, it'll tell you what, the, tell you what that's a subsection of. Okay. So, it says, except as provided in section R302.11, item four, fire blocking shall consist of the following materials. Number one, two inch nominal lumber. So again, they're saying, hey, if it's gonna be fire blocking, then it's gotta be a two by. Now again, they use the term nominal. So when you, call, when you order two by fours and you go to pick them up, you actually get inch and a half by three and a half, right? So the nominal dimension is what we call them, also known as the rough sawn dimension. When they cut that lumber, they did actually cut it two inches by four inches, and then they ran it through a planer to true it out, which took a quarter inch off each side, so now you're short a half inch, right? So that two by four, short a half inch for the planer, right? Now you're one and a half by three and a half. But nominal two inch, they're saying, hey, call it a two inch. It was a two inch before it was planed. It's got to be at least that, Okay. Now, what does it mean when it says, except as provided in section R302.11, item number four? Do you agree historically, right, an hour ago, that wouldn't have made any sense to you at all? But what they're saying there is, hey, we're not talking about R302.11, item four, right? Now, that's not 302.11.4, that's 302.11, fire blocking, and then one, two, three, four down below it. They're saying, so, hey, except for that one thing, they've all got to be nominal two by, okay? Moving on to the next page. Top left, what just happened? Top of page 39, top left, what just happened? Do you agree we changed sections? And again, I don't care about getting hung up on the words. Sorry, we changed subsections. So we're still 302, fire resistant construction, but do you agree we're not dot 11 uh, fire blocking anymore? Now we're going to learn about draft stopping. By the way, there's, you have to have three things to have a fire, right? You have to have, kind of, have, to have come, some kind of a spark, flame, or glow, right? Some, some kind of heat to ignite. Then you have to have some kind of combustible material. So do you agree that was the fire blocking? Block the fire from getting to more combustible materials. And then the third thing you have to have to have a flame is oxygen or air. So do you agree draft stopping is how we're going to eliminate the air? That way, if we do have a fire, it'll keep it from perpetuating or spreading or growing, and hopefully maybe even put it out. It burns the air out of the room and the fire goes out, Right? Remember when you were a kid and you had those tall candles and you'd put your hand over the top of the candle and the flame would eventually go out because it burned all the air, the, all the oxygen out of that candle, right? Same philosophy here. This draft stop stops the draft. That way it doesn't keep supplying air to the area for combustion, right? If I have a bunch of combustible materials but I don't have any air, then it's not going to burn. If I have a lot of air, right, dot 12, but I don't have a lot of combustible material, 302.11, then it's not going to burn, right? So down below that, highlight 
R302.12.1. So do you agree? Stop. Before I read anything, I'm going to learn something about materials for draft stopping. Okay, hold on. I'm confused. I thought on the previous page we learned something about materials. We did. But those were materials for fire blocking. These are materials for draft stopping. And again, this is a great example. If you have a question about fire blocking, do you agree you should read 302.11? If you have a question about draft stopping, you should read 302.12, listen to this, and you should never read both of these because you either need to know the rule for fire blocking or for draft stopping, never both, okay? This is what gets people in trouble in the code. They read both of those subsections, 302.11, 302.12. Now they get conflicting information like, I don't know what to do, right? Well, you should have only read the fire blocking if you're looking for a fire blocking question, and you should have only read the draft stopping if you're looking for the draft stopping question, Okay. 302.12.1 materials. So these are materials used for draft stopping. Draft stopping materials shall be not less than a half inch gypsum board, uh, comma, three eighths inch wood structural panel or other approved material uh, adequately supported. So again, this uh, wood structural panel, you need to understand that's also known as plywood. You won't see the term OSB or plywood in the code. Anytime they refer to OSB or plywood, they'll always use this term wood structural panel siding. Wood structural panel siding, okay? That is plywood, that is OSB, so there. Now again, do you see how people see a conflict? Hold on, Wade. The coach's telling me two different things here. Before they said it had to be a two by, now they're saying it's got to be a three eighths. Well, they're talking about two different things. That two by was for fire blocking. This three eighths is for wood structural panel or plywood for draft stopping, right? So again, totally different. And again, you see what I mean when I say we shouldn't have read this if we wanted that. We shouldn't have read that if we wanted this. Because if you were to call me and say, hey, wait, I got a problem. I, I'm confused here because one place it says a three-eighths and the other place it says a two-inch, I would simply ask you, why are you reading both of those? Because you're either a draft stop or a fire block. You're never both. Right? So if you're a draft stop, just read that. If you're a fire block, just read that. Now, I want to stop here for a second. Do you see how easy the code is to use, right? So the complaints people have with the code is the code contradicts itself, the code repeats itself, it's this giant book of information, I can't find what I'm looking for, right? And the code is really, really hard. Those are all lies. Code does not contradict itself, code does not repeat itself, the code is not hard, we just gotta follow the rules on how to use it. The code is not this giant book of information, it's a giant book with chapters cut down into sections, right? Very easy to manage, right? So again, easy to understand. Now, again, do you agree if I had a test question that says, what's the minimum thickness, and they'll probably call it of wood structural panel siding used for draft stopping, do you agree the question is draft stopping? The question is not wood structural panel siding when you go to look for it in the code. If I go look for wood structural panel siding, that might be in the code a thousand different places, but it's only going to be here in regard to draft stopping, right? So go to the index, look up draft stopping. It'll say refer to R302.12, right? And there you go. Now, by the way, let me teach you something else real quick. When you look up draft stopping, it's going to give you multiple references. It might give you a reference to 209, right? 209. Well, 9 might be, oh, section 09 might be the Fs of chapter 2 definitions. Do you agree if I read... Though I'm just making that up, 209, if that was the Fs, I'd go to fire blo I'd go to a draft stopping. That'd give me the definition of a draft stop. And then in the index, it would say refer to R209, comma, R302.12, comma, and anywhere else draft stopping is. So when you go to the index and see multiple listings, there's no way for you to know what they are. Go to the first one. If that's not it, go to the next reference from the index. If that's not it, go to the next reference in the index. But again, you should systematically move through here quickly. What I would do when I found that uh, 30, I'm sorry, the 209, for example, uh, I'd find draft stops. I'd go, oh, that's the definitions. I wouldn't have even found 209. I would have just opened up when I got to chapter two and said, hey, these are all definitions. I'm not looking for the definition of a draft stop, unless I am. If I am looking for the definition of draft stop, then I'm in the right place. If I want to know how to build them or whatever, I'm in the wrong place. Let's go to the next reference. Do you notice I went to the next reference before I even got to section 09 and then down to draft stop? Make sense? So again, work efficiently, right? I'm going to use that word a lot. Focus on being efficient. People want to be fast in the code, right? So I tell people, if you want to be fast, 
Work on being efficient. Efficiency will make you fast. If you try to be fast, you may be in motion, but you may not be accomplishing anything. If you're efficient, it may feel like you're moving slower, but when you're done, you're done. You don't have to go back and fix anything or tidy up anything, right? So focus on being efficient. And again, a practical application of that for you would be efficiently going to the index, looking up what you need to find, and then efficiently going to each reference. If that's not it, let's go to the next reference. Don't read anything in between. If that's not it, go to the next reference, right? That's being efficient, okay? Let's move on, right-hand column there. So we got R303. Now, now what happened? We didn't change subsections from 302.11 to 302.12. We changed sections from 302, fire resistance instruction, into 303, light ventilation heating. Stop. First off, do you see what happened? Two things happened there. We left the last section, 02, and we started a new section, 03. That sounds silly to say that, but you need to have it in your mind when you get from, you notice there's no dot, dot, dot here. That's how you recognize that. When there's no dot, 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 that means it was the beginning of a new section. So 302, chapter 3, section 03, right? So now we're in a new section. And then 302, I'm sorry, 303.1, habitable room, stop. Now again, do I know exactly what I'm going to learn if I read this? I'm going to learn in habitable rooms, I'm going to learn whatever 303 is, light, ventilation, and heating. So do you agree in this section 303.1, I'm going to learn how to light a habitable room and or how to ventilate a habitable room and or how to heat a habitable room. Agreed? By the way, I'm not going to find anything else. Hey guys, I want to know what the minimum dimension of a kitchen is. Do you agree I'm not going to find it in 302, right? 302 is light, ventilation, and heating, right? So again, I should be looking for size of rooms or room sizes. I should not be looking for light ventilation and heating. Make sense? So again, notice how efficient this is. And again, I'm, I'm getting real picky with it because again, when you understand this, it makes you amazing in the code. And it's not hard to understand. You just got to pay attention. 